What's up guys, Randy with Fix My Heat. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five most common faults that you're gonna find with your forced air furnace as a homeowner. The first thing you should do before attempting any repairs on your furnace is find out what it is or isn't doing. So first we're gonna go through the sequence of operations of your standard 90% furnace. Your furnace might be different than mine. It might not be a 90% efficient. It might be a 98 or it might be an 80. The general sequence of operations on a furnace that's 20 years old or less is gonna be similar to mine here. If yours is older than that, then I would recommend calling a technician because there's other things that you need to be concerned about that a technician should check out. However, if you've just got no heat, you're kind of in an emergency, maybe it's the middle of the night and you just Googled this, I'm gonna walk through the sequence of operations of your standard 90% furnace and we'll take it from there. We've got power coming in on this guy here. You can see it comes down to this power switch here, which I've got turned on currently. And that power goes in through this wire here down into this compartment and there is a blower door switch. If I push this blower door switch in, then power comes on to my circuit board and this transformer here. So this transformer converts the voltage from 120 volts AC to 24 volts AC to power this circuit board and all the controls. Now you notice that LED light comes on. That is a status indicator light that will tell us if there's a problem with the furnace. And we'll get into that later. Now this board, when it's on, is sending 24 volts up to the thermostat on this red wire here. And when there's a call for heat, it sends 24 volts back to the from the thermostat to the circuit board through this white wire here to the W terminal from R through the thermostat to W. If you're getting 24 volts back to this W terminal, then the circuit board knows it's time to start the call for heat. So the next thing that starts is this inducer motor will start to run. The inducer motor is the exhaust motor for the system. So it pre-purges and sends air out through this pipe up through the sidewall or maybe up into a chimney if you've got a metal vent on yours it might go to your chimney or to a b vent chimney this motor is now running and we need to make sure that it's running somehow so this system has something called a pressure switch on it this little tube right here is connected to this port that tube runs up to this switch this pressure switch is what monitors to make sure that not only is that motor running but the vent line is clear this pressure switch, if it is open, will flash a code on your circuit board that says pressure switch stuck open or something to that effect. So if, if for some reason this isn't closing, that can stop your sequence of operations. Once this pressure switch is closed, it tells it through this circuit here, these two purple wires, that that switch is indeed closed. It sends that power back down to the circuit board, which says, all right, pressure switch is closed. Time to start the furnace. So that sends power, 120 volts this time, to these wires here. This is for your igniter, these two wires going up into the burner compartment. You'll see through this little peephole here, an orange light glowing. Sometimes a furnace will have spark ignition, you'll hear like a clicking noise. Most commonly you'll see this hot surface igniter. And that hot surface igniter starts to glow inside of this burner box to get ready for gas for fuel to come into this box. And there's burners back in here that I'll show you in just a second as well. You can see on the left hand side of the burner compartment, there's two little sticks coming up, one on the far left and one on the middle burner. On that middle burner is the igniter, that's what lights the burners. And then on the left hand side there is the flame sensor. So one of them lights the burners and one of them make sure that the burners are lit. So if you peek in through this hole, this motor's running, this switch is closed, and this has power going to it, you should see an orange light here. And then this gas valve's gonna open. So once that has had a moment, this igniter has had a moment to warm up, this gas valve is gonna open to allow gas to flow through this line here, through the gas valve at a specific pressure to the burners that are behind this cover. Once those burners light, your circuit board is going to send power to this guy right here. This is called your flame sensor. That flame sensor is going to sense that there is a flame signal there. It's going to rectify that signal and tell the board, yep, the burners are lit. Start the blower timer. So as soon as that rectifies that flame signal, your circuit board down here is going to send power, 120 volts, to the blower motor, which is right back here. That blower motor will start to pull air and circulate it throughout the house. 
We need to make sure that your filter is clean. Mine, for instance, is starting to get a little bit dirty. That filter needs to be clean to make sure you've got enough airflow across that heat exchanger to keep it cool. There are a couple safety devices in here to make sure that takes place. This guy right here is called the high temperature limit. That will monitor the temperature. Oh, it really just is a little snap disc in there that if it gets too hot, will break this circuit right here, these two wires. So there's 24 volts going through this switch all the time. Unless it gets too hot, then it will break that circuit until the circuit board to turn off the burners because it got too hot. That is an important safety device. And then this one right back here, if you can see it, is a rollout switch. So if for some reason the flames inside of the burner compartment are making this burner compartment too hot, or if you've got flame rolling back from inside the heat exchanger, that will cause the burners to shut off as well as a safety device. Then this furnace is a condensing furnace. So the air going out through this pipe is very cool compared to your 80% furnaces or the older style furnaces that burned a lot hotter. The exhaust gas was a lot hotter coming out. So because this exhaust gas is so cool, this exhaust starts to condense inside of the piping. Water starts to roll back through this pipe. And as you can see inside of this tubing here, it's pretty wet. That spills out into this drain trap that we've got right here. On top of that, this is a condensing furnace. So it also condenses inside of the heat exchanger, which is this box right here. This secondary heat exchanger looks kind of like a radiator inside, and that also collects water and spits it out into this drain line. If for some reason that drain is backed up, it can cause your pressure switch to not close as well. All right, let's get back to the show. By far, the most common repairs that I come across as a technician are maintenance-related concerns. They're going to be things like uh, dirty flame sensors, uh, plugged drain traps, things to that effect, dirty filters. Number one, dirty flame sensor. I know I've already covered this in another video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the link down in the description. Dirty flame sensor is one of the most common repairs that I find as a technician. And it's a very simple thing to fix. Normally the symptom that you'll see is the burners light and turn right back off within three seconds. And that's because the flame sensor can no longer sense flame. So you just need to pull it out of there, clean it with a cloth, a uh, dollar bill. I use a, a, a bronze brush. I know I said it in my other video, but I'm gonna say it again. Do not use sandpaper to clean your flame sensor. Don't do it. Number two is a broken hot surface igniter. I did a whole video on hot surface igniters as well. A hot surface igniter is what actually lights the burners inside of the burner compartment. If that's not working, it cannot light the burners. The gas won't light and you'll have no heat. The symptom that you'll see is that your inducer motor will be running and then just nothing happens after that. You'll hear it probably turn off and turn back on a few times and the burners will never light. And again, those tend to break when they aren't maintained, if the burners aren't clean or if the gas pressures aren't set properly, you'll kind of blow through igniters a little bit quickly. Um, there's certain igniters out there that are less likely to break, although I generally recommend replacing your igniter with the OEM igniter, not a universal replacement. Uh, a lot of times the universal replacement, even though it says it works, it says it fits and technically does, I end up having more problems than success with. Number three, a failed inducer motor. This motor right here is the inducer motor. It's connected to the inducer assembly. This is the exhaust motor for the system. And if this is not running, the rest of the furnace will not run either. The exhaust needs to be expelled from the house in order for the burners to light. So the pressure switch, which we talked about a moment ago, will not let the uh, gas valve open or the igniter glow if this motor is not running. If this is hot to the touch and it's not moving, then you know that there's a problem. Additionally, this could be running and spinning and doing just fine, but you don't have the pressure that you need to close that, that pressure switch. You might have a bird or a squirrel inside of this pipe here. Uh, sometimes like big nests and things can end up in this pipe. Additionally, the intake pipe here could be clogged and not allowing enough air to flow through the heat exchanger to close that pressure switch. If this motor isn't working, I always recommend pulling it off of the furnace to make sure that there's no blockage in there. Obviously make sure your power's turned off before you remove any electrical components and let this cool down before you handle it with your hands. It's Mine's warm right now 
and it's been off for at least 15 minutes while I've been filming this episode. So keep that in mind. This thing can get very hot, uh, actually burn your skin hot. If you're not careful, you can burn yourself. Um, another thing that can happen too is this can actually get full of water and then that motor can't spin the wheel anymore because there's water inside of this inducer because your drain is plugged. I showed you this drain trap here. That guy can get plugged up and if water can't drain out of the system, it has nowhere else to go but down into that inducer assembly. And it's actually fairly common as well that that inducer can't spin because there's water inside of there. So make sure that you clean your drain trap occasionally or have a technician do it for you. Clean the drain system out to make sure everything drains properly. One thing that I forgot to note in that portion of the video is that the code that you'll probably get with a uh, failed inducer motor is a uh, pressure switch stuck open or pressure switch failure, something like that. Um, a lot of times people say, oh, okay, it's a bad pressure switch then. The best thing you can do is double check and make sure that there's nothing wrong with the motor, nothing blocking the motor or the vent pipe before you go replacing the pressure switch. You, you could order the pressure switch, have it come in from wherever it's coming in from two days later, put it on there and the same thing's happening. You can check the presser with a manometer if you have one, um, or you can check it electrically with an ohm meter to see if it's actually opening and closing by uh, sucking on the tube with your mouth and seeing if the, the component in there closes. If it does, then the switch is probably okay and you might actually have a draft issue, which is what the pressure switch is for, is to check for a draft issue. So always double check that your pressure switch is good uh, before you just go replacing it because you might be disappointed to find out that you waited for that part to come and there's actually nothing wrong with it. Number four is poor airflow. There's several different reasons you can have poor airflow, but generally speaking, what's gonna happen is your furnace will light and it'll run for a little bit and then it'll get too hot. And it'll turn, turn itself back off on safety. So this guy right here is the high temperature limit. If that high temperature limit is tripping for some reason, then that means that you've got a condition that isn't allowing enough air across the heat exchanger. Either your blower speed's too low, very uncommon if this is just a sudden issue. Your filter might be dirty. If you haven't changed your filter recently, you should probably pull that out and check it. Or maybe your secondary heat exchanger or your air conditioning coil is plugged up with dirt from running the system with no filter. Those ones are a little bit harder to fix on your own, but I have come across them. In the last month here, I've come across both. So keep that in mind too. Filtr filtration on the system is very important. I recommend getting a at least baseline filter that you can't see through to make sure you've got good airflow. Additionally, you might not have a working blower motor. If for some reason your circuit board isn't sending power to the motor, or the motor is getting power but it's still not coming on, or the capacitor's failed, so maybe the motor's trying to start but it doesn't have the oomph that it needs, or the capacitor to push it to go, then that can cause your furnace to get too hot and overheat as well. If you're interested in learning more about capacitors, I have a technician training video. It's about a half hour long. It's on my channel. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. Um, it's very informative. It goes through the basics of capacitors in about the first 10 minutes, and the rest of it is very good technical knowledge for technicians. Number five, dead batteries in your thermostat. Another common issue that I run across is dead batteries in the thermostat. Always check to make sure that the batteries in your thermostat are fresh and charged. A lot of times if you have a programmable digital thermostat with batteries in it, like double A's or triple A's, uh, you'll get a low battery indicator. If you've got no display on your thermostat, then either it gets its power from the furnace and the furnace isn't giving it any power, or the batteries are dead. So always check those first before you call a technician. If you're interested in learning more about the flame sensor, the igniter, or the capacitor, which we talked about a little bit in this video, keep in mind I've got other videos on my channel that you can go to. I left some links down in the description regarding those subjects, expanding on them a little bit more. All right, that is it for today, guys. I hope that you learned something. If you did, let us know down in the comments what you learned. Additionally, if you like the content I'm producing, consider subscribing. It really helps me out if you do. Let me know what you thought about the video. If you liked it, hit that like button down below. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. I can take it, I promise. I hope that everybody has a great day.